Hello, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Melon and Nostalgic Runner, and we are back for another review. Um, this is for the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, um, season 13, and this is episode 18 or 19. Hold on, let me double check. 19. And this is part two of the reunion. So this is a three-part reunion. And before we get into it, I'm going to try to speed this up as quickly as possible because I forgot to charge my camera, aka my phone. So I don't have a lot of time to do this review, so we're going to try to get into it as quickly as possible. Um, but without further ado, let's not waste any time. Let's get, into, let's get into it. So the reunion continues with the Kyle segment where she's basically gaslighting um, Dorit and the rest of us um, for her excuses of why her friendship has changed with her and Dorit. And Garcelle chimes in in defense of um, Kyle saying, like, why can't you just apologize or acknowledge your wrongdoing and all this? And um, Garcelle kind of got, ate, got, kinda got um, checked by Dorit in that. And I hate to say this. I normally wouldn't agree with Dorit on that. I agree with Dorit in this moment just because it's like Garcelle set this one out. <laughs> I'm sorry, but like, as a viewer, Kyle is frustrating. So, yeah, <laughs> this is one of the times where I'm just like, I know Garcelle. And part of the reason why I think Garcelle even chimed in is because she just doesn't like Dorit more. Like, she really just does not like Dorit. And it does show in this reunion that she pretty much throughout this whole re reunion Garcelle kept her foot on Dorit's neck. So them being friends again or even being friends, not likely based off of the, how things were going here. But anyway, I digress. So Dorit kind of gets her together saying like, hey, you know, I'm allowed to defend myself. She said what she had to say. Now it's my turn to speak. Scoop back. That's kind of pretty much what Dorit said there. And, um, Really, this whole entire argument, we find out the source of it, which we kind of knew it was, but Kyle just being around the bush, not getting to the point. This whole argument with her and Dorit is based upon Dorit, you know, asking for Kyle to take accountability in her part, chiming in in the conversation last reunion when her and Kat, when Kyle and Kathy were going back and forth. And um, I get, and, and this is and this is actually where Sun chimed in, and Sun and I were kind of on the same page with this. It was very uncomfortable to watch Kyle and Kathy go back and forth at the last reunion because they're sisters. So their issues are beyond the show. It's rooted and heavy rooted and it's, it's uncomfortable. It's giving cringe. So there's a lot of like animosity that is not being spoken about on the camera. So as a viewer, that's frustrating, but also at the same time, because we know it's deep rooted, it's kind of cringe and we kind of don't want to see it. It's one of those things. Like, I don't really want to know all that, like that it's, it's a lot. So, um, Dorit and her was really trying to chime in to help resolve things, but because it is family related, the rest of the ladies left it alone for the most part. Like the rest of the ladies did not chime in where, when they were going back and forth because it was uncomfortable. And even Sutton said like, it was really uncomfortable to watch y'all go back and forth because Y'all are talking about some serious family issues that's not even related to the show. It's just deeply rooted. And yeah, what happened on the show is a catalyst of you guys not getting along again, but it's not just about that. And everyone knows that. Like, even as viewers, we know that. So, um, basically, <laughs> Sun's like, I think she was trying to help. And, but then like, as Sun's kind of coming to Dree's defense. Erica's on the other side, kind of assisting um, Kyle and her wording, saying like, hey, you know, 
I get you're trying to help, but it didn't land. Like, it, it didn't come off like you were trying to help. Like, really long story less long, and this is a lesson learned to reach and mind your own business when it came to that. Similar to what I just kind of said with Garcelle doing what she just did right there with her and, you know, Garcelle and Kyra, go Gar sorry, Dorit and Kyra are going back and forth. Garcelle should mind her business on that. Um, th they're friends, so that's a huge difference. But I would say the similar analogy is, yeah, when it's family business of them going back and forth, mind your business. And Dorit learned the hard way that she should mind her business. And even um, Andy says, yeah, I get what you're trying to do. It just didn't land. There you go. But the thing is, I will say this. <laughs> if this was an isolated incident, I think people would not be giving Dorit such a hard time. But this is a pattern of hers. The things that she tries to do, it just doesn't land ever. And child, this whole reunion... I'll just say this, Dorit, this is not a good reunion for Dorit. If y'all are, I don't know who's all a Dorit fan, but anyone who is a Dorit fan, this is not a good reunion for her. <laughs> it's, she, yeah. You would think that Kyle will be the one who's on fire because she's the one who has the first seat. Mm-mm. Even though Kyle did have more of what was going on in the storyline, because... Kyle is the queen of deflecting. It just went right to Dorit. <laughs> and I'll, I'll, I'll elaborate even more here. So basically, um, the next subject that comes up is Kyle's sobriety. And we find out it's been a year and a half during the reunion since she's been sober. And she feels great. She didn't need to go sober. It just feels better to do that. And I can attest to that because I kind of go back and forth when I go sober for a little bit. And then I... Go back to drinking occasionally, and I think I'm a little bit more on my sober era these days um, because I do feel better when I don't drink that much. So I get it. Um, and then we also talk about Kyle's weight loss, and um, the topic of Ozempic comes up, and rumors of that, and she made clear that, <laughs> okay, Erica lost weight too, but. Kyle's like, y'all know I didn't do no zip, didn't do that. Like, there was muscles. And you can tell Kyle did it the natural way because she has, like, sh sh her muscles are so defined. Like, even season one, she didn't have muscles defined like that. I noticed that um, Erica was kind of quiet. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm, sh I'm being a little shady here. But the subject of weight loss did come up here a little bit on both sides. And one thing that did come up also, especially not really the weight loss, but in, in reference to the sobriety, was a lady's insensitivity to Kyle being sober. And pretty much Garcelle, Erica, and Dari kind of doubled down on their thought on how they how they came off on that. I have to agree with all three. I have to disagree with all of them. Because as someone who goes back and forth, I'm someone who has moments where I'm being sober. Um, like I sometimes go two, three months without drinking and nothing is worse than a friend trying to talk you into drinking. If you already said, this is not the time I'm on right now, I need to respect that. And I always feel away when that happens. Like I don't like when I feel like I'm being peer pressured, especially <laughs> child is 2024 right now. So this is a new era, like our younger generations, like Gen Z, and then I forgot what the generation is after that, but like they have learned their lesson from, well, my generation and, um, you know, Gen Xers, they're not about the binge drinking and all that. Like it's all about sober life and clear, clear mind. And also too. There's so many things out there, especially if you're in a major city like where I'm at. There's so many places where you get mocktails. You can also get, um, and the non-alcoholic beers and the brewery thing has evolved. I mean, they still have that weird non-alcoholic aftertaste, but 
if you want something to kind of tickle your fancy so you can still be social, there's so much alternatives out there where you don't have to. And they're in Beverly Hills, so sh there clearly is an option. But yeah, I'm not going to lie. As a viewer, I felt away with the way they were acting with her on that. And the exercising. I feel like there wasn't enough focus on them judging her on the exercising. And their stance on it is that, well, I, a lot of lifestyle changes at once. And I'm sorry, so... <laughs> As someone who has done that, I'm I, I'm someone who has done that. I made a whole entire lifestyle change um, within my life. And none of my friends questioned it in a way where it felt like I was like doing things wrong. And the way it came up on TV as a viewer, it did not come across okay. Um, and I know they said they were doing it in just, but child, it didn't come off that way. So, um. Yeah, <laughs> those are my thoughts on that. But anyway, moving on with that, she states that, um, so Kyle Feather states and clarifies, like, if I was being reckless, I would kind of understand um, it being more of a conversation. But, and then this is where Sun interrupts her. She's like, well, you were being reckless, though. And she's like, and she basically, this is where Sun clocked in. Sun was like, you were being reckless because you insinuated I have a drinking problem. So not only did you go on your sober being sober, you kind of weaponized that, which she did. And that's one thing, girl, you can't do that. But she literally did do that. Um, so th that's the thing with Kyle's like. I can't. <laughs> Y'all can tell I'm not a Kyle fan. Kyle will do things to go this way. And then she takes 10,000 steps back, like <laughs> two steps forward, 10,000 steps back. And this is what she did. Even she did do this this season. You're cheering for her. You're like, yeah, okay. You're living a healthy lifestyle. This is awesome. Good for you. But then you do the thing that a lot of people are not okay with me, including you kind of almost do the thing where you weaponize your healthy lifestyle against others by saying, oh, well, you have a drinking problem. And it's just like, girl, you've been sober for five minutes. You cannot do that. <laughs> That's not how that works. That's not how that works at all. What are you doing? So... Anyway, this is where things pop off and we have Kyle deflecting and because Sun's basically like, no, you insinuate I have a drinking problem and you insinuate I have like eating disorder. And so Kyle's deflecting and also side note, Sun, I, I, man, I need to help you out with your with your reunion stuff. Because you are not on Kyle's foot enough. I feel like you put too much focus on the drinking problem thing. And not enough focus on the eating disorder thing. Because that eating disorder thing that, you know, went into Anne Marie and everything else. Kyle started that whole thing. And she pretty much lit the match and walked away. And no one even went, to, went back to her about it. you. You briefly touched on it. But I needed you to like stay on her neck on that. I need you to turn, take some lessons from Garcelle and stay on her neck. Like Garcelle, this whole entire part two reunion made sure she had every single moment. It was like, look at Dory doing this again. This is what you do when you're in, you lying, when you stall like that. Like that was Garcelle, the whole entire reunion side note. But anyway, Sorry to bring it back to Garcelle, but I just need you sudden to come with that kind of energy. You did towards the end, but you need to start off with that. You need to come off hot, 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 because I promise you, yeah, Kyle is this new strong version of her, but she's new to that. She ain't true to it. So you need to stay on her neck. You need to, you need to kind of almost give Erica energy. I need you to channel that inner mean girl and go in. But anyway, 
So back to the Kyle and um, Sun situation. So Sun asked, like, were you insinuating that I had a drinking problem? Yes or no? And Kyle's still trying to tap dance around it. And Sun's like, yes or no? And interrupts her, says yes or no. And then Sun, and then Kyle's like, we're not doing the name them thing again. Don't, don't, don't do that. And I was like, dang. <laughs> and um, basically, Kyle doesn't take any accountability. You, you should, accountability and Kyle, oh, that's, they don't go together. They're not peanut butter and jelly. They're the opposite. It's oil and water when it comes to Kyle and accountability. It doesn't ever happen. But anyway, so <clears throat> Andy asked um, Crystal if she thinks that Kyle insinuated that um, Sun has a drinking problem or not. And this is the first time this whole entire reunion where Crystal went back to the way she knew the way she has been on the show and not being stern. And I think what I figured out with Crystal is if it's not really her battle all the way, if she's not being directly attacked, she doesn't really clock in. If it's just kind of like indirect and not really about her all the way, I think Crystal has a tough time clocking in. And also, if she doesn't really have a direct issue with that said person, she doesn't clock in. I feel like she's someone who just is going to give a little bit more grace and try to be more neutral. Um, so I think that's what, what I found out with this reunion. It took me till the reunion to figure it out. But it's like, oh, that's what it is. Like, it, she's, it has to be someone who is directly attacking her and she has to feel a certain way about them. But if she doesn't really feel a certain way about them enough where they're, where, she, where she doesn't feel attacked, she's just going to kind of tap dance around it. So Crystal kind of said, yeah, in a, in a roundabout way. She, she kind of talked around it a little bit, though, to be honest. But, um, but Kyle is fighting during this reunion. She's not backing down. She's not doing her normal thing where she cowers. Um, she is st still deflecting. And but she's deflecting with a little bit more aggression and she's deflecting and um, redirecting and not taking any accountability. And then she does have moments. She's like, yeah, I said that. And I stand by that. So the one thing that she said and she stood by it was um, sudden pushing her food around. She's like, yeah, I said that. And I stand by that. But like she's not saying that she has an eating disorder. But like, son, to my frustration as well, son, she's like, well, you're never going to directly say it. That's not you. You insinuate and then you, you're smart. You're very, very smart, which is accurate. I was like, yes, okay. So um, to me, I think Kyle kind of won this round with son though overall because son tried to say, so son's like, Okay, we're on a TV show because this is now we're talking about Kyle and not sharing enough when it comes to her and what's going on with her and Mo this whole season, which was frustrating to watch because literally she was doing all these stupid um, breadcrumb, breadcrumb, breadcrumb to leave us with nothing. Like, even though the issues have probably been issues for a while. And I will say that because we have confirmation from someone else that this issue, these issues were probably issue for a while. So you did need to breadcrumb, breadcrumb us like that. You did that intentionally. But anyway, so. But. Kyle's rebuttal was like, OK, so you basically came on this show with your dating coach and a horse and you shared your life. Because basically, Sutton's argument was like, we all share our lives on this show. And, and Kyle said, I don't agree. And so she kind of checked her a little bit there. But, and then that's where the commercial happened. Back from commercial, Sutton fights back. She states, that's a lie. You know that's a lie. Which, honestly, if you watch the whole entire season, it is. <laughs> it's such a lie. Because... Honestly, if Sun wasn't on this show this season, it would have been a snooze fest. Like, Sudden 
carried the season on her freaking back. Most of the storyline and full story arc was sudden. Actually, the whole season was a sudden season. Like, it was all sudden. So, yeah. Kyle, not too much on that. You ate her up in your with um, going back and forth with her that round. But with the truth, no. <laughs> she wasn't really telling the truth there. But anyway... Kyle does default back to being a victim again. <laughs> she, because one thing that Kyle will do is deflect and be a victim. Uh, on brand. On brand for her. But anyway, Kyle, then um, Andy does ask the ladies if they feel to bring it back to the original subject because they went all the way to all the subjects that, <laughs> that pertains to Kyle and son not getting along because Kyle kept deflecting from the original subject. And because Sutton is not someone who's very good at standing on one's neck. She couldn't keep Kyle on course. Which is why you need someone. Because you know what? I'll just say this. Kyle would never try this with Erica. Because she knows she wouldn't win. Kyle, Erica would destroy her. Because <laughs> I have everyone... And honestly, she wouldn't even... I mean, she tried it with Garcelle, but Garcelle did check her, and she ain't tried it with Garcelle again. I think Garcelle, because it was the first season, she kind of was lied about it. Kyle will never try this with Garcelle. And also, too, Kyle won't try it with Garcelle for multiple reasons. Because Kyle, we all know this, Kyle cares about her image, her image which to me, side note, is rich... That Kyle tries to call Dorit out and being so image front, so about her image and all about this, that, and this, and that. That is a pot calling the kettle. Y'all are the same person. The only difference is your stuff is real and um, Dorit's faking it. She ain't got the money. She ain't got the coins. And we all know that. We, we can tell. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> anyway. And you're probably like, how did Dorit just catch a stray out of nowhere? I don't know. I just felt like it. But anyway, so <laughs> back to this. Kyle, so Andy does ask the ladies, okay, do y'all feel that Kyle insinuated that son has a drinking problem? Crystal states, no, nah, it was probably, it was actually more Dorit that did that, which is true. Dorit was the one who, did, who mainly did it. But Kyle started the subject again. A case of Kyle lighting the match and walking away. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, so Dorit repeats a question. So then, because then it goes to Dorit, he asks Dorit, Well, Dorit, what you say about that? And um, Dorit's like, She repeats the question and she says she doesn't know if son has a drinking problem. And this is where <laughs> Garcelle was sending me. Garcelle's whispering, but whispering out loud because you know they're mic'd on so they, we can hear everything. So Garcelle whispers to um, Crystal says, while Dorit is talking, she's like, yeah, she's stalling because she's lying. <laughs> I was like, something like that. I was like, child. And that's why I knew that's why I knew that Garcelle was not going to let Dorit live. <laughs> but anyway. So Sun is not letting Dorit get away with that answer just like that. And so now it turns to <laughs> Sudden and Dorit going back and forth. And guess who walks away clean as if they didn't start any of it? Kyle, it got redirected again. I'm like, child, Kyle needs to just open a firm on how to do that. She is, she's a queen of doing that and no one catches it. I mean, I feel like I'm smart enough where I would catch it, but it just boggles my mind how it just, it's so seamless how she does it. It's just, she's like, <laughs> 
Anyway, next segment. So now we're um, talking about Kyle's weed party. And this is where we basically talk about Denise Richards of it all. So, and Denise going back and forth or trying to like go off on Erica, but D D Denise being a hot mess and telling, and as she's trying to confront Erica while Erica's high, because they're at a weed party. So a lot of them are high and Erica was, and Denise, I don't know what she was on. She wasn't, <laughs> she wasn't just high. She was messed up. Um, and she's like saying, watch the show. Watch the show. I mean, that's literally how De Denise was on there. It was, it was, it was tragic. And, um, then it comes up during the reunion. The true, the true reason why Denise was mad. She's not really mad at Erica. She was really mad at the rumors, the hookup rumors, especially with her and Brandy and, um, the people who started. So Lisa Renna, Teddy, and Brandy. None of them are on the show anymore. The only person who's left from that crew is Erica. So taking out on Erica. And the thing is, we all know that that was the reason why Denise was really mad at her. It was not about the threesome comment. Everyone knows that. So anyway, that's kind of... Um, that's that on that. And then the viewer asks a question and um, not really asks a question, makes a comment about how like Kyle is acting dumb when it comes to um, makeup gifts. And Kyle's still doubling down on that. She didn't know that was a thing. She She's heard of push gifts, but not makeup gifts. We don't care. Anyway, then we go into um, and um, then um. From Kyle, from the Kyle thing, um, Andy asks, "Well, did Tom give you a makeup gift, Erica?" And Erica's like, "No, I got lawsuits instead." <laughs> that's not really funny. That's that's yikes. Anyway, um, I'm leaving it alone for now because we'll we'll wait till Erica's turns come coming coming up. So, um, and then another thing comes up about Morgan Raid. And um, her reaction to Kyle throwing the weed party. Again, a little bit of fluff here. Morgan Wade felt away because, she, I mean, Kyle isn't really about that marijuana life. She was more of a drinker. And so she didn't understand the purpose because she doesn't really understand the show, whatever, yada, yada, yada. We don't care. And then um, from there, they talk about Denise and Dorit and how Dorit was trying to correct Denise's um, jacket because it was upside down and how Denise pretty much kind of like went off on her, dr drunkenly went off on her. And um, basically Garcelle and um, Sutton has, Denise is back and says, well, no, Denise feels like every time Dorit is around her, she always tries to correct her fashions kind of like in a mean girl way. So that's why Denise reacted the way she did. And that's pretty much the end of that segment. Okay, this next segment, I'm not going to lie. It was kind of boring. And the reason why it was boring is because it was Dorit's segment. <laughs> Oh, man, for as much as I'm saying Garcelle's on Dorit's neck, I guess I am, too. Oh, well. Um, <laughs> so we talk about Dorit and PK. They show Dorit and PK. And then Andy's asking questions to Dorit. And literally, as Dorit starts talking, because, oh, by the way, Dorit did not follow her, her points. She did what she always does and talked forever, was long-winded, was annoying. And guess what happened with this? Andy started yawning yet again. And then the <laughs> shady producers show every single reunion when Andy starts yawning when Dorit starts talking. Because, child, I almost fell asleep watching this segment. I'm not even going to hold you. I was bored. I was like, girl, get to the point. The point. Anyway. So, Dorit... Um, so the conversation about Dorit and the 10K, 
being stolen. She explains that it still doesn't make any sense. It turns out that she was at Marshall's and then they made a, a thing that she likes to shop at Marshall's. Everyone likes shopping at Marshall's. And what else is going on? I'm sorry. I don't care. <laughs> anyway. And then we get to, okay, now we're getting to the good part because we need to have, I feel like Dorit is someone who needs a sparring partner. If it's just her by herself, she doesn't give anything. But anyway, so the questions about, really not the questions, but like questioning if the robbery happened with Dorit is the next subject. And if the viewers had questions, then Garcelle questioning it. And that shady confessional that Garcelle threw at her about her jury still being present after the robbery. And I'm sorry, it was shady and kind of messed up, but I, I laughed. I laughed. I'm not perfect. You know, I'm a work in progress. I am. And sometimes my pettiness wins. And that was a case of, my pettiness went, won, it won. It did. Anyway, so this kicks off Dorit versus um, Garcelle again. And Garcelle's like, look, I still got questions. I stand by it. The math wasn't mapping. I don't, I never said that I didn't believe that you got robbed. It's just the, the story doesn't make sense. And this is one thing, love or hate Garcelle. Garcelle stands by what she says. She don't backpedal. She don't deflect. She don't do none of that. She she is a queen of I said what I said. Uh, of everyone on this cast, she's going to say I said what I said. That's one thing she'll do. Anyway, so, because um, Dorit saying that hurt my feelings. You did this. You did that. And Garcelle's like, look. It didn't make sense. And if this is what you say, this is what you say. So as Dorit's talking, Garcelle goes looking the other way, looking unbothered. And Dorit's like, look at you. You don't even care. You don't even care. And she don't. I don't either, though. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I don't. Because <sighs> I don't know. There's just something about Dorit that is just, it, it's giving, not genuine. Like Dorit to me is Beverly Hills version of um, Larsa. Nothing real about her. Only difference is Larsa is very combative. Um, and Dorit's very passive aggressive, micro aggressive. She loves the microaggressions of it all. We know that. Anyway, so from there, um, they talk about um, PK and the other woman rumor that <laughs> Sun said was in the car with PK when he got his DUI, which wasn't true. And Sun says the street said that because everyone's asking, where did you get that information from? She's like, the streets were talking. She's like, I didn't say it was true. I just said I heard. <laughs> and then, um, d and then, uh, basically, Sun was like, "Hey, I got a spanking after that, though." So I mean, whatever. And then everyone was like, "A spanking?" She's like, "Yeah, PK went all the way off on me about that," <laughs> which he did. They show the footage. They show the evidence of him reading her for filth, um, online. But anyway, so from there they go into. Um, the Kyle and her, her signing paperwork from Mo and not reading it. And we'll come back to this point in a little bit. But I'm just going to throw this question out there and then we'll come back to it. Do you really believe Kyle doesn't do that? You, do you really believe Kyle does that? Signs paperwork and not really read it? Based off her personality. Putting a pin on it. Anyway. So... From there, um, Andy asked <laughs> asked Kyle, like, hey, have you ever met um, Teresa Judice? Kind of rebutting about the not reading something before you sign it. And Kyle's like, yes, yes, I have. 
Um, I don't know. It's just a lot of paperwork. And I'm just like, are y'all buying that? Anyway. And then Erica states like, it's okay to trust your partner. <laughs> and then um, Andy states that, Erica, I don't think you're the right person for this message. And she's like, no, no, like, I'm not at all. Because, <laughs> you know, the obvious. And actually, in both cases, that's the, that's the conclusion. <laughs> when your husbands happen to be crooks, you sh probably should not trust anything that they give to you and just sign it. Because guess what? Especially in the case of Teresa Judice. She had to serve some time because she signed, signed some things she didn't read. And Erica is still in all these legal issues because, well, yeah. Anyway. So, um, from there, it goes back to the Dorit thing. Let's go back to it real quick. Hold on. We'll, we'll go back. We'll go back. Child, I'm sorry. I had to take a break. I had to take a break because... The Dorit segment to me is boring. I'm sorry, but it took up a lot of the reunion. So um, from there, they kind of talk about Julia Roberts was on Watch What Happens Live because in during the season, um, Dorit and PK celebrated their anniversary and um, PK thought it'd be cute to reenact Pretty Woman, which is weird. Um, and... Um, Julia Roberts made a comment on Watch What Happens Live. It only would have been okay if she could have kept the necklace. Because the necklace was, I think it was $5 million necklace that he basically rented. And he's like, yeah, this is, this is returning. But he literally said it as he's giving her the necklace. So she basically got to rent the, re the necklace for that night. And then basically had to give it back. And... Dorit says like, yeah, but when it comes to jury, I would have wanted to pick it out. She just, she gives, you know, PK bail on that. And then from there, um, they have to go into the subject about Dorit not liking surprises. And honestly, looking back, because I rewatched it, it wasn't a good surprise. It was not a good surprise. So I get why Dorit didn't like it because you're insinuating that I'm a hooker. <laughs> but I wouldn't have flew off the handle like Dorit did either. Two things can be true. Wasn't the best surprise, but it was also the thought that counted and you could have shown more grace for him trying to do something nice for you. But at the same time, the pretty woman thing was of poor taste. So all those things can be true. Anyway. So from there. Um, they talk about Dorit and PK separation. And. Side note. This is pretty far along in the reunion. And guess who I forgot was even at this reunion. Amory. I forgot she was completely there. She's literally the only one that hasn't said a whole entire word this whole entire reunion. And I will say this. Um, she does eventually, but because Andy asked her a direct question. And she literally only spoke once the whole entire reunion. And based off of this, it's like for you to be a Housewives fan and be on the show. I would think you would have studied more. Unless she got the news right away, she wasn't going to be coming back or something. Or she already made her decision that she wasn't going to come back. It's If you don't show up during the regular season, you need to show up during the reunion. Other, otherwise, you're not going to be invited back. You can't just kind of skate along. And I'm, kind, I'm, I'm actually kind of okay with that, though, because... And she, I didn't even know she was here. She literally could have been friend of. Like, I'll be honest, because we do get an appearance from Kathy a little bit here towards the end of this reunion. Kathy's presence was much bigger, just a short amount of time of her being on the screen than even what 
even what like um, Anna Marie did. But anyway, I digress. So, um, Dorit is stating now that because, um, Andy asked like Dorit, so how is your marriage with, um, PK now? She says it's better than ever. And both <laughs> Crystal and Garcelle reaction the whole entire time while Dorit is talking, by the way, is sending me, they are just looking shady, just like, and then as, as she's saying that they're better than ever, because Dorit did this dramatic pause and is trying to talk it over. And it's giving Dorit is talking so slow because she's thinking about her lies. <laughs> Not going to hold you. And um, Erica and Kyle's reaction to is literally matching. Um, like Garcelle and Crystal's reaction. They all are sighing her. And basically, Dree states that PK is sober now. She stopped. He stopped drinking, and he's. She's trying to say that that's like been the issue all of a sudden. And it's just like, okay, if this is really true, and this was the issue the one entire time. I mean, clearly he may have a drinking problem because I think that was like his second or third DUI. And you're not okay. Yeah, you may not have as much money as the rest of his cast, but you have enough money to get yourself a freaking Uber and not drive under the influence. I'm sorry, let's be real here. I don't care if you're in California. Ubers are not that expensive. They're not. I've taken I've taken them in, in California before. They're not that bad. Especially if you're doing that every so often. But my whole point is, and for them supposed to be having money, you should be able to t afford to get that. But my whole point even with that is, if that was really his problem, why didn't we focus on that during the season? This is your husband. Why didn't we talk about that? Dorit, you don't ever give us a real storyline. So this is why the energy, I think, I think that's also the reason why the ladies gave that energy to Dorit. And even Andy's like, oh my gosh, I, this must, this has to be your last season. Because <laughs> I think, honestly, I think Kyle's the reason why Dorit was able to stay on the show for so long. And if her and Kyle don't get together, I don't see her coming back. But anyway. So, um, the next subject comes up about Dorit and her marital issues and her sharing it with Kyle, but Kyle not sharing her marital issues to Dorit in return. And um, Kyle feels that Dorit should have reached out to her about this because there were signs of it and through Instagram and social media and things like that that Dorit noticed, but yet she didn't call Kyle or anything like that. And um, Kyle's like, you should have reached out to me personally versus waiting till the camera's in my face on the show in the car to say something. And two things can be true when it comes to Dorit and Kyle. I don't think either of them are good friends. I think Dorit is kind of being an opportunist when it comes to Kyle with this show, but I think she also thought they were building a friendship. And I think also Kyle feel like Dorit and her were building a friendship and, um, Kyle's not really the, a great friend either. Like they both aren't really great friends to each other. Cause I don't really think Kyle's a good friend to anybody, but that's neither here nor there. But yeah, anyway, Kyle, they end the segment where Kyle says that they're good, but Dorit doesn't agree. And so they need to kind of talk it out afterwards. Sorry, after that last segment, I had to take a break. No, I, I kid, I kid, I kid. Actually, I mentioned in the very beginning of the video that my um, phone was going to die soon. Yeah, it was about to die. So I had to like charge it. And so while I was at, I was like, let me go ahead and get cleaned up and get changed, get ready to go sleep, because it is cha, I need to go sleep. But anyway, before we go on to the next segment, I forgot to mention in the segment before that led to the PK and Dorit um, separation talk, they actually um, re-show um, Erica performing at BravoCon and um, Dorit reenacting it. And Erica watching it back and actually appreciating it. She's like, yeah, she did that. That was that was a good confessional read because that was one thing that Dorit did do okay, well, decently this uh, this season. 
um, at the beginning and then it just went to the rails was her confessional reads were great. And then it just went, it went to the rails. Um, <laughs> it's like she showed up for the first couple episodes and then, pfft, yeah. But anyway, so next segment, um, Erica, and which is the Erica segment where they start off showing Erica saying she's giving up fighting for Lent, which she almost did. And <laughs> then it went to Denise versus Erica. And it talks, and then we go a little bit into Erica um, getting her Vegas residency. So they show flashback of Erica, um, you know, the season finale where Erica performs her song, It's Expensive to Be Mad. I can't do it. <coughs> I, I don't have the auto tune. It's expensive to be mad. Child, I don't know. I <laughs> cut it, cut it, cut it. I can't do it. It's hard to do that. Like, anyway. And I don't even, she doesn't even do it anymore. She lip sings it because it's so auto tune heavy because it's a dance song. But I, child, I still can't go over the fact that I've heard that song so many times before. I had no idea that was her. <laughs> I thought the song went way differently than what it was. And then when I heard the song, I was like, I've heard this song before at gay bars, but I've heard it before. Anyway, so they also go into like her spinoff and then um, they do talk about how um, Sun joked about the ticket sales. Erica ain't really bothered by it. She's like, okay, whatever. I think Erica this season is still pretty much over fighting with Sun when it comes to that because there's no really, there's really no real reason for Erica and Sun to fight too much anymore because, I mean, Sun apologized. For the main reason why Erica even had an issue with her. So, yeah. Anyway, so um, Erica, so they actually go more in depth about Erica giving up fighting for Lent only for her to break it with Denise. And um, Sun actually asked uh, Erica if she feels bad about going back and forth with Denise, and Erica's like, no, she asked for it, which Erica. You're right when you're right. She did ask for that. So therefore, I don't see why she would feel bad about that because Denise kept trying to push it. She wanted to like fight, like, you know, go back and forth with Erica. I mean, and Denise was not ready for it. And anyway, so then they kind of go into talking about Erica and Tom and the victims. My cats are wilding in the other room right now, and I'm going to find out what all they're doing. <laughs> I know that has nothing to do with this reunion, but like I literally heard funds removed. I'm like, what are they doing? <laughs> My cats are in the other room running amok because <laughs> they're not used to me, me being up this late. But anyway, I digress. So that was why I gave it a look. But, um, then they go into the subject about Erica talking to the victims because the subject about the spinoff comes up and Erica stated that her legal counsel recommended for her to visit the victims. And then Andy asked for more details and Erica's not really giving him much. And she actually stated before she started going into this was that you know, the last couple of seasons were tough because, you know, she was advised not to say anything because, you know, all this is legal type stuff. Because um, I think a viewer question actually came up about, did she not show empathy because of it will imply guilt? And Erica saying, not really. Really, she was hoping to not have to talk about it at all because of legally she was advised not to talk at all. And we know all this stuff is still ongoing. And she actually does state a little, she does sprinkle a little bit of breadcrumbs that she, one of the victims that she talked to, that she found out her money is wrapped into some type of trust with one of the victims. Like it's a whole entire thing. And the way I read and gather that is that 
because Tom was just laundering and doing all the fraudulent stuff for such a long time, it's blurred on what's Erica's money versus what is victim's money. And the question is, did Erica know about all this stuff? Like, I think Erica, and th I think this is an opinion thing, and I don't think we're ever going to really know the answer because Erica's not going to, of course, Erica's not going to say, yeah, I knew. Like, no. <laughs> She's not going to say that. But if she truly did know how deep it went, I guess essentially she would be kind of, it sucks for her too. I mean, it does. Let's be clear. It's not, I wouldn't wish this kind of thing on anyone, but at the same time, I don't even know. It's just all kind of weird. And I don't even, I, I don't even like speaking about it anymore at this point. Cause it's just like, because I don't know all the details for real like that, I don't want to be insensitive to the victims that her husband basically con and cheated out of money. So I don't want to speak about it too much. But my whole thing is that I will say um, is that the last thing that kind of came up, which was also something I was even confused by, is that now Tom is able to stand trial. And Kyle's confused by it too. She said it too. Because we found out prior to this, about four years ago, he was diagnosed with dementia and sent to a home. So is she, it, and he's in his eighties now. So technically based off his age and stuff, the dementia should be so bad that he wouldn't be competent. So how is he able to stand trial if he is, has an advanced form of dementia? And so basically Crystal being the MVP of this reunion, asking the questions that the people want to know, she's like, it doesn't make sense. And then um, Erica's like, well, are you saying that, that Tom's lying? Just say that, that's how you feel. She's like, no, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying it doesn't make sense because, you know, my dad had Alzheimer's, which is a form of dementia. Like it's, they're all, it's the same family, you know, mental family. And um, based off of his age and how long he's had it, he should be, he would not be competent. Like, there's no way. And um, she also works for Alzheimer's, like, um, foundation for charity. So she's like, it, it doesn't make sense. And so they go to the commercial break. Um, and then... <laughs> Garcelle and Crystal are talking more about it and Chris and Air and Garcelle's like, yeah, it just doesn't make sense. It's not lining up. And, and Garcelle's like, I, I get what you're trying to say because it doesn't make sense to me either. And she's like, and both Garcelle and Eric and um, Crystal's like, yeah, either he's lying or she's lying. Someone's lying. And Erica is looking on the other side. I don't know if she can hear what they're saying, but probably could because they're mic'd up. And I don't think we're ever, I don't think we're ever going to know everything. I mean, that's just what it is. We're just not going to, but yeah, clearly someone's lying. Um, but then as the commercial, cause all this is happening during the commercial break, mind you. And then we see that, um, Kathy has arrived. By the way, Andy did let the ladies know that Kathy was on the way. So everyone was like, oh, okay. Kathy's going to be here. And so, um, Right before the commercial break ends, Kathy's getting glammed up and she's speaking about Kyle and Mo and how her and Kyle are in a better place and that how, yeah, it's rough that Kyle and Mo are not doing okay, but because she knows how Kyle is, she thinks things, she's the type of person who thinks things through prior to like really doing things because she's very much not a risk taker. She's very much a careful, meticulous person. And she's like, she's probably been actually really thinking about this for the past four years before it even happened. And I mean, I probably shouldn't say that, but I just said that. That <laughs> like Kathy, girl. And this is the question. Remember, I asked the question earlier on. Based off of this, based off of what Kathy just said, 
Do you really believe that Kyle is signing something without reading something that Mo has given to her? I would say maybe very at the, at the very beginning of their marriage when she was young and really much in love. Yeah. But recently? Come on now. I feel like Kyle likes to play with us to think that we're dumb. Because, it, it, and to me, I don't believe it. I don't think, she, I think the whole entire time she's never done that. Because Kyle has made a point to say multiple times that her mom raised her to never sign any, never trust a man to do that. To do that. And she still comes from that cloth. I know she tries to pretend she ain't from that cloth, but she's def definitely very much from that cloth. And the way she moves on this show and how meticulous and how everything that she does is very deliberate and intentional. And even with how much she states she's not a risk taker. Literally, she's spelling out to you is not in her personality to do the opposite of that. And maybe to a certain extent she did here and there. But I think when she was maybe signing things that were not as, um, you know, Legal, I could see her really do her signing something that's not necessarily as legal or a legal thing that um, Mo provided to her. But I just don't believe that she really has never, I, I don't believe it. That That's my whole point. But anyway, last segment. And side note, I'm going to go, I'm going to check on my guests one way or the other because I feel like they're about to burn my house down. <laughs> Have you ever had pets that are like gremlins? I think my cats are gremlins. But they're like on Eastern time. So it's already past a certain time, even though I'm on Central time. They're gremlins. But anyway, so and it's probably one of those things like it might be a good thing that I'm normally sleep during this time. Because if I knew how they behaved wide awake, it may not be good. But anyway, I digress, I digress. Um, so last segment, we talk about sudden, the sudden of it all, but not all the sudden se segment. I'm pretty sure we're going to go back to the sudden segment because sudden carried the show, um, this season. But anyway, so we're talking about, we talked about sudden magic Mike, sudden and Avi, which by the way, we did not talk enough about Avi and I want Avi to be on the show. I better see him in part three. I'm missing my dosage of Avi. Anyway. Um, Sudden in her relationship with her ex-husband, Christian, and then Sudden, the name of it all. And so first, we talk about Sudden and Magic Mike. And a viewer question came out asking like, not really asking, more or less making the statement like, girl, no one believes that <laughs> your excuse for why you freaked out at Magic Mike. No one believes it. I don't believe it either. I believe she really wanted to be chosen and she wasn't chosen. And I think based off of everything else she had going on when it came to her and her ex-husband and how she, you know, her relationship with men and or lack thereof was impacting her where it kind of bothered her that she didn't get picked. I think that's really what happened. And she never did own up to it in this part of the reunion. I kind of wish she did. Um, but she's standing by what she said that she felt away because she doesn't like the, the insinuation of the head in the place. She don't like that. And then Erica joked over, she's like, well, do you like it in real life? <laughs> Erica clearly said playfully, she's like, girl, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. And she's like, <laughs> anyway. And then from there, we talk about Sun and Christian um, because apparently we find out and. And Sun did explain it during the season. But part of the reason why she was feeling away, so she, Sun kind of said the reason without saying the reason, the real reason, is because she literally got that news about Christian moving to London the day of them going to the Vegas trip. And we didn't know until really this season how much her ex-husband still had power over her. So even though that was her ex-husband, she still was pretty much being an obedient wife, even being an ex-wife. Um, so 
when he said that he's moving to London, he's like, I'm moving to London. The son's moving. To, I forgot her son's name. I feel bad, but I forgot her son's name. Her son, her son's moving to London and you're moving to London. He basically had the gall to try to say that son is moving to London too. Didn't even ask. Just said, no, y'all all all moving to London. And so she was literally freaking out thinking this is what she has to do because she's still playing that role even though the relationship is over with. Um, And I just, I'm so curious to know and hopefully maybe next season we dig in deeper now that she's kind of more finally getting more on the other side of it of how did this man have this much control over her? Yes, she keeps insinuating he was a powerful man, money-wise, but because I'm not someone who's part of that world, I, I want her to explain more what that means. Um, I, I That's one thing that I kind of was left, to, left for desire. I want to know more. Um, and then from there, it goes to Sun versus Kyle. Um, so that... Because Sun felt a way that Kyle really just wasn't really there for her when it came to her sharing her thoughts when it comes to Christian. And then everything's pretty much, you know, um, because that was the other segment, you know. And then um, Sun and her, and her settlement money comes up because we find out, watch what happens live, that... Sutton is getting $30,000, no, not $300,000, child, I lie, $300,000 a month as settlement money post-tax. I just want to be able to have two months worth of that so that I can buy my place and afford the utilities for a year, but still have a regular job. That's what she's getting per month. Anyway, so <laughs> Amber, and so then um, Andy asked, "How does Amory feel about this?" And no, and I'm like, "Why do we care?" But anyway. <laughs> Clearly, this was a way to get Anne-Marie engaged in a reunion because, again, she hasn't said a single word this whole entire time. And this is, like, towards the end of the second part of the reunion. Anne-Marie's like, it's not my style. It's not something I would do. And that's all she had to really say. Like, honestly, Anne-Marie could have just, like, they could have discouraged her away after the first part of the reunion because she had nothing to add to this. I mean, she just kind of was just there. Anyway... So then um, we get back to, now it's part two, Sun versus um, a Kyle. Um, they go back and forth again about the weed party. Um, really more about the conversation that Sudden was trying to share with Kyle before the cameras went on. So Sun made a point to say, Kyle, you act different when the cameras are off versus when they're on. So... That's funny that Kyle earlier on in this segment, earlier on in this part two of the reunion was calling Dorit out on acting, acting a little funny with the cameras are on, where Kyle literally is doing the same thing to Sutton. And Sutton's like, you were being supportive of a good friend, but as soon as those cameras are on, you flipped, you flipped on me. And then Kyle tries to deflect to say, no, you flipped on me when the cameras came on, you know, the whole back and forth thing. And then Kyle and they're talking about Kyle visiting Sutton and the name of thing and how that didn't go well. And um, because Kyle's like, I thought you were acting funny that day. That was kind of weird. And yeah, Sutton was clearly drunk. Okay, let's just call a thing a thing. Kyle, Sutton was drunk. Number one. Number two. Or didn't Kyle just pop up at her house? She didn't even ask. She just popped up. So that's two. And then three. Like. Okay. Yeah, she was drunk, but she was also calling you out. You wouldn't have put as much stink on it if she wasn't calling you out and just being a fun girl. 
Let's be real here. You know that's why she felt away. Um, and also too, they never did concentrate on Sudden literally reenacting Erica's like <laughs> elevator thing. Cause they did talk about the elevator thing and Sun's like, yeah, I'm, she, she, she walked it back. She's like, I don't really think Erica planned it, but it just felt that way initially at the moment. But watching it back, no, she didn't plan it. Cause that was spoken about briefly, but it literally was brushed over cause Sun don't really have any problems with Erica and vice versa. Anyway, so, um, then, Kyle basically say, like, Kyle's still trying to play victim, saying, you know, you kept trying to, like, push about my relationship, this and this and that. And Sun reverses it back to her. She's like, you've been mean to me this whole entire time. This whole time. Which no lies are told. Kyle has been mean to her ever since Sun has been on this show. Friendly to her face and behind her back, been shading her been making these snarky comments from day one. Really, I, I wouldn't say day one. I would say basically after her first, the season, once Sun became the fan favorite, cause you know, that's really where, I, I feel like that's really where this comes from. Once Sun became the fan favorite, Kyle couldn't take it. Because again, I'm gonna keep saying it again and again. Kyle wants to be the fan favorite so bad, but she ain't got the personality for that to ever happen. Everything that would make her a fan favorite, I'm quoting myself, she doesn't do. I'm just, I... Anyway, so this part two ends where um, Kyle's like questioning her being, you know, questioning sons like, so where have I been mean to you this whole entire season? And son, in the words of Denise Richards, watch the show. That's where part two ends. So yeah, it was a decent reunion, decent part two. Um, I am gonna continue to say this. I am enjoying watching the reunion, but I made a mistake again of <laughs> watching. And I won't do it again because Real Housewives Miami um, third part is already over with. So I made the mistake of watching third part of the reunion for Miami. Um, so that's going to be coming up soon after this. Um, but yeah, I made the mistake of watching the third part of the reunion before I watched this. And I need to stop watching <laughs> Real Housewives. I, I, I ain't going to hold you. It's not fair to any other um, Real Housewives show for, for Miami. Miami should really be getting the ratings that Beverly Hills is getting, but it's not, and I don't understand that. And Miami is such, but it, it's so good. And I hate to put but Miami into this um, Housewives review, but I just need y'all to support Miami because I need Miami to stay on. Because it, anyway, the point is, I watched Miami before I watched this reunion, and I shouldn't have did that. I need to, I, I can never, I need to, I can't do that again. I can't watch a show that's just up here, that's way above average, like it's A++, and then watch a show that's like a B, B minus, B plus, even A minus. I'm sorry, but like, ugh, I shouldn't have did that. But anyway, that does conclude this um, review. Please like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you get anything out of the content. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Melanin Nostalgic Runner, and I will see you next time. Bye.